see your mum. Thanks. How is he? He's really weak now. In fact, Doc Hamo says he might only have a couple of weeks. Father. My son. There's so much I want to say, but... I've had a good life, Jesus. And I know it's near an end. As you know, the doctor told me a fortnight ago I've got two weeks to live. I told him I want one week in July and the other in October. <laughs> Oh, let's, let's just talk about the good times. And there certainly were plenty of those. You know, I'll always have fond memories of our times together in your carpentry shed. Like when you invented that thing you called a, a wooden car with wooden wheels and, and wooden doors, a wooden seat and a, a wooden engine. <laughs> yeah, and it just wouldn't go. <laughs> yes, we certainly did some fun things together. Like when we teamed up for the Nazareth North Harvest Festival to win the Great Locust Stomp. Or the times we spent inventing things together for the Nazareth Futuristic Village. And then, then there was the fishing up Cataraptavia Creek. Ah, as your mother used to always say, a fishing rod is just a stick with a worm on each end. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fishing. Why some people don't understand the relaxing qualities of fishing is one of the great mysteries of life. No, Jesus. Women are one of the great mysteries of life. <laughs> like, how is it that women can pour hot wax over their legs and rip hair out by the roots, yet still be scared by a spider? I think you must have had them pretty well worked out by the end then, Dad. <laughs> I always remember the advice given by my dear old dad. No man has ever been shot doing the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then you had your 15 minutes of fame when you auditioned for MasterChef. And I should have made it through too. But I guess it wasn't very smart of me in the invention test, putting popcorn in my blueberry pancakes, hoping they'd turn over by themselves. <laughs> you did it tough though, especially in the early days. Oh, don't get me started. The area we lived in was so poor, even the rainbow was in black and white. My parents were so poor, we couldn't afford a fire for heating. So Dad used to suck on peppermints and we'd sit around his tongue. Did you have any regrets? Things that you would have liked to have been different? No, not really. Apart from maybe missing out on a tender on a, one of those two million shekel Julia school buildings. Judging by that flash new leather upholstered four hoof drive donkey I see horsey riding around with, <laughs> I could have set up you and your mother for life. But you have set us up, Dad. You've set us up with our heritage, with the passing on of your faith and the scriptures. You've passed on your values, your character and the love you have for your fellow man. 
There was always something special about you, son. As you know, the stories we told you of your birth, of the angel visiting your mother and telling her she was pregnant, but of God and the angel's visit to me. Oh, that harrowing trip to Bethlehem for the census and that crazy innkeeper who would have let you been born in the street <laughs> if I hadn't remembered my Medicare card. God obviously had his purpose. He certainly must have. And then there were the stinking shepherds who turned up with stories of choirs of angels out in the fields celebrating your birth. I know there are some whose idea of housework is to sweep a room with a single glance. But your mother's fastidious. And here she is in a disgustingly dirty stable, having been through a long labour, <laughs> and guests drop in. Is that why mother always says the art of hospitality is to make people feel at home? when you wish they were. <laughs> oh, there was always something special about you, Jesus. It didn't take the rich, wise men from the East who sold their BHP shares just before the mining tax announcement to tell us that. But you were such a cute kid, though. I remember when you were quite young, and your mother told you you had to put on clean socks every day. <laughs> By Friday, your feet were so thick, you couldn't get your sandals on. <laughs> I remember, though, there was that one time you weren't so proud of me. I was about 12 years old, and, and we went down to the temple in Jerusalem. That was when we couldn't find you on our way home. And you hadn't bothered to send us a text to tell us where you were. We searched all day and finally found you in the temple discussing scripture with the scribes. <laughs> Your mother and I will always remember that day. I was in my heavenly father's house. That was a big day for me, Dad. You may be the son of a carpenter, Jesus, but we both know you're much more than that. I can only hope that I have fulfilled what was expected of me when the angel came to visit all those years ago. You have been everything a son could wish for in a father, Dad. God chose you well. Your reward awaits you in heaven, Father. I love you. I know my time is now ending. As they say, death is hereditary. <laughs> but for you, my son, your time is just about to start. singing. What's your name? Mummy says I shouldn't talk to strangers. Sounds like you have a wonderful mother. You look sad. Was my singing that bad? My brother once said he thought I should sing solo. 
so low, nobody could ever hear me. No, no, your singing was beautiful. <sighs> Certainly helped to brighten up my day. You look like you've been crying. My dad says men don't cry. He says it makes them into sissies. You don't look like a sissy. Well, my dad died today. Your daddy died. That's really sad. Was he a good daddy? He was the best earthly father a son could ask for. He was kind and compassionate, and he loved my mother like no other. He always treated me like, like the most special son in the world. Did he give you horsey rides? My daddy used to give me horsey rides when I was a little kid. And now I'm all grown up, he doesn't have the time to do that anymore. Daddies should never be too busy to give their daughters horsey rides. What does your daddy do? My daddy's a real important man. And I know that because he keeps telling me all the time. He's a leader in the synagogue and he makes lots of money. So me and my brother and sister get to have lots of real cool stuff, like this tin can 4.0. Do you want me to sing you some more music? I want to grow up to be just like Hannah Montana. She's the greatest. Your daddy must love you so very much. I bet your daddy loved you very much too. My name is Anna. My name's Jesus and I'm pleased to meet you, Anna. I'm sorry your daddy died, Jesus. He is in heaven now, you know, singing with the angels. And I bet he gets to sing real loud all of the time with nobody telling him off because he's out of tune and stuff. Because he's with God. That would be real cool. Kind of interested, what have you got in that box? Something my horrible brother put in my bed. Take a look at this. Oh, looks like a caterpillar. I kind of like caterpillars. You boys must be all alike. Caterpillars are disgusting. I can't work out why Noah didn't just squash them on the yacht when he had the chance. They're so slimy and ugly and dirty. Just like boys, really. <laughs> so, um, what are you going to do with him? I'm going to throw it out into the scrub, where hopefully it never shows its ugly head again. You know, I love caterpillars. I think there's so much they can teach us. I think you must have gone to a funny school, Jesus. <laughs> well, in a, lot of, in a lot of ways, they're, they're a lot like us, really. Our lives are all slimy and, and ugly and dirty, and we deserve to be thrown out in the scrub where no one will ever see us again. But God's got a special plan for this caterpillar. A special plan? What sort of special plan? It's a surprise. How about you keep him a bit longer and see what happens? If my brother finds it, he'll just put it back into my bed. Anna! Anna! Speaking of which, it's just my dopey brother Jacob. We're supposed to be going to the temple together. Come on, Anna. If you don't hurry up, we won't get home in time to watch talking about your generation. Enjoy your day, Anna. Anna, I'm coming, brothers. Would you like to be my friend? You know, I feel like I already am. Cool. Thank you.
us, honey. We always knew it would take a little bit of patience once we etched the L plates in the back of the donkey and Beck got her donkey driver instruction. A little bit of patience? It's bad enough having to crawl along at 80 brays an hour without having her let it stop and eat the flowers around the roundabout and holding up all the traffic behind her. It made me cringe more than watching Abbott the Opposer out jogging in his budgie smugglers. But she is getting so much better. The road is starting to turn when she does. <laughs> well, I think I'm a very good driver, Daddy. All of my friends think so too. In fact, it was only yesterday when I took the donkey up the street to pick up a copy of Girlfriend magazine, I received a nice little note stuck to the saddle by the local policeman which said, parking, fine. <laughs> well, they do say, if a woman wants to learn to drive, never stand in her way. Dad, can I please put the gold coins in the offering box today? OK, Jake, but do you remember everything I taught you? You need to use the WAM method. Yes, Dad, the WAM method. Wait for the right opportunity, act conspicuously, and make a big scene. WAM. Can I do it now? Number one is wait. See this old woman? She's making her way up to the offering bowl. And everyone's watching her. Oh dear, look how little she's put in. That's not even enough to buy a soft cone at McBurgers. How embarrassing. OK, while that's fresh in everyone's mind, you can slowly make your way up there. Be sure to jiggle the gold coins as you go. Is this really necessary, Jairus? We have money. What's the big deal? <sighs> Miriam, Miriam, it's one thing to have money. It's another for people to know we have money. Daddy, I met this really nice man today called Jesus, whose father died in Not me. now, Anna, not now. Ah, oh, look at this. Everyone's watching him. This is fantastic. You know, what I don't get is why we have to bring the money to the temple at all. I mean, that money could be used for so many great causes. <gasps> like buying me a jewel-encrusted prom dress. <gasps> or a, a set of fluffy dice for the four-hoof shy donkey. <laughs> or tickets to a Justin Bieber concert. <laughs> it was really sad, Daddy. I told him how you used to give me horsey rides. Yes, yes, Anna. I'll buy you a horse when we get home. OK, Jake, make a big scene so everyone sees how much we've given. And wham! God must love us so much. Why do we always have to make such a spectacle of ourselves? Did you hear about the two eyeglasses that got together and made spectacles of themselves? <laughs> Did I do good, Dad? Can we go home now? It's been at least two hours since I last updated my profile on Facebook. And my friends will be all over Twitter if they don't hear from me. <laughs> Twitter? You get it? Oh, I just made a joke. I oh, can be so funny sometimes. Sometimes. This is the girl who puts lipstick on her forehead to make up her mind. <laughs> Daddy, can we pray? I want to pray for the man I met today in the park, who is so sad. Yes, we must pray. But first, we need to find a good place to pray. How about here on the top step? Overlooking the temple courtyard. Okay, family, follow my lead. Dear God, when I rise and see the morning sun, when I'm jogging on my morning run, I thank God. I am not like. 
like them When I'm buying some stuff from the shop Sometimes I just can't help it but stop and thank God I am not like them Josh. You're going to love this, Jake. It's a Governor Julia doll. How does that work? It's great. You wind it up, you put it on the shelf, and it does absolutely nothing for three years. <laughs> That's not very nice, Josh. You boys are always so mean to us girls. Well, nick off then. Why do you have to keep on following us around? How about you go and try and catch a unicorn? You can be so horrible sometimes, Jake. And everybody knows there are no more unicorns since great, great, great Uncle Noah couldn't squeeze the second one in. Talking of Noah, don't understand why he didn't swat a couple of flies and mozzies when he had the chance. So, why is the crowd hanging around here, Josh? I'm pretty sure they're not all here to see you. 
It's that John the Baptizer guy. He's been dunking people in the water and telling them that the Messiah is coming. What's a Messiah? Well, he wouldn't be as popular as my dad. My dad is going to stand for the local Galilean elections. He's promising donkey do insulation for all houses and a rising water tax to pay for the floods in Babylon and Syria. He's going to be as popular as a dead horse at a blowfly convention. <laughs> you said donkey do. I'm telling Mum. I don't think this guy's trying to be popular. People are just flocking to see him. Isn't he the dude who almost single-handedly stopped the locust plague by coming up with different creative ways to cook them as delicacies? Apparently, Cole's even selling them now. <laughs> yeah, forget man versus wild. This guy's a legend. He's got the R. M. Williams camel fur jacket, lives like a feral on locusts and wild honey, and up until recently spent years wandering through the desert in a state of despair. Uh, you mean he's a Victorian Collingwood supporter? <laughs> you said Collingwood. You are going to be in so much trouble for swearing. <laughs> so, what's he actually doing? He's baptising people. They say he's been given the power to forgive people's sins. The water is God washing sins away.
Where's your headache this morning? I think she went shopping. <laughs> That's very good, sir. Now, I have packed all your bags for your big trip to Jerusalem. Oh, it is exciting to know that you're planning to stand as an independent candidate for the seat of Galilee. Think of all the famous people you might meet, all the big dinners you might attend at Herod's palace, all of the overseas trips to Babylon we might go on, and all of our trips around the countryside on your leather-bound chauffeur-driven camel? I think you'll find that all camels are actually leather-bound, Jama. And I don't want to hear any political jokes. Oh, no, sir. You certainly won't hear any political jokes from me. My father always used to say that the worst thing about political jokes is that they usually get elected. <laughs> so, where have you got me staying in Jerusalem this time, Jama? I don't want a repeat of last month. When the room you booked for me had a baby lamb running around inside, pooping all over the carpet. Well, sir, you did insist you had a room with a mini bar. <laughs> By the way, Jamar, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but somebody stole my wife's credit card a couple of months ago. I've been meaning to get you to look into having it cancelled. A few months ago, sir? That's terrible. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Well, I would have, but the person who stole it seems to be spending less than she does. <laughs> so, if you don't mind me asking, sir, where do you plan to launch your political campaign? On the site of the proposed centenary statue on Mill Strait? Overlooking the river at Pine Tree Homestead? Or perhaps at the Council's Galilee Day breakfast? There's one thing for sure, Jamar. I could draw a crowd wherever I go. I'll tell you who can draw a crowd, Master. And it's that Jesus guy who's been causing a real stir lately. He's been healing sick people, casting out demons, calming storms, doing all sorts of miracles. The story is that Eddie Maguire was even seen pleading with him after last year's grand final draw with the Saints. I'm telling you, Jamar, that man is nothing but trouble. He comes in here acting like he's the son of God, telling people how to live their lives and giving them all sorts of false hope. Somebody should just arrest him and lock him up. Daddy, there was just a man at the door who said he was collecting for the old people's homes. So I gave them Uncle Dave. <laughs> you what? This is, this is your daughter who thinks being awestruck is when someone hits you with a paddle. <laughs> hey, Beck, tell Dad about the chooks. It's nothing, really. It's just that I just found out that two of our chooks have just stopped laying. I'm sure they'll start again soon. I doubt it. She ran them over with the donkey? But because I'm being honest with you, Daddy, I was wondering if me and my friends could go hang out at the park. What's so special at the park? And me and Josh want to go catch a few yabbies down Cataraptavia Creek. You could come with us if you like, you know, like old times. Do I look like I've got time to go catching crustaceans? Just take 20 shekels and go and buy a couple of kilos from Big River. Daddy, can you take me to the park on the hill near the river? There are heaps and heaps of all my friends going. Can't you see I'm busy, Anna? I haven't got time to go to the park today. I have this position paper to write on encouraging parents to spend more quality time with their children. <laughs> oh, please, Daddy. There are going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people there. All to hear the preacher Jesus speak. He's such a good speaker. And he's funny too. All of the kids just love him. Anna, I don't want you going near that man. He's trouble. He's out to corrupt young minds like yours. 
maybe we should go, sir. I'm not heading down there to listen to that heretic deliver a monologue on the merits of good versus evil. What's a monologue, Beck? I think Daddy said it was when he was having a conversation with Mother. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, sir. A ready-made crowd. A ready-made crowd. Hundreds and hundreds, all ready to listen. Hundreds and hundreds. Anna, find your mother. We're going to the park. Yay! Are you not with the Teacher Jesus? Ah, good afternoon, ladies. It's good to have you here at the Mount this afternoon for the teaching sessions. And yes, we are with the Teacher Jesus. We really want to hear him teach. He is so fantastic. I could sit at his feet and listen to him all day. Yeah. And poor old Martha gets stuck with the washing, the cooking, the cleaning, scrubbing the loos and grazing the lawns. Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you two ladies. The teacher Jesus will be joining us here shortly. Wow, I can't wait. Let's go see who else is here. How about here, sir? There are people milling everywhere who would just love to hear you speak. Good idea, Jamar. You set up the soapbox. I'll prepare myself. Look, Jaris, are you really sure this is a good idea? Of course it's a good idea. Standing for political office has been my lifelong dream. And this is my big opportunity. And just look at all these people. They're just like a big swarm of locusts who will naturally band together and be captivated by my strong aura. Is that what I can smell? <laughs> Maybe you should have worn your green jacket. I think you'll be a fine politician, sir. And very funny, too. They do say that you're one of Galilee's greatest wits. They are half right. <laughs> I think the time has come, sir. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. All right, everybody, a bit of shush, a bit of shush. My name is Jairus, and I'm looking forward to your support in becoming the newly elected local representative for the seat of Galilee. Go home. We're not here to listen to you. Yes, let's go home, please. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe that we've been dictated to by the powers that be for far too long, and it's time we made a stand. For too long we've sat, aside, sat by and watched as our precious Jordan River is siphoned off to water the petunias and cabbage patches of Jerusalem and Jericho. Well, we're told that every third bucket of water we own has to be tipped back in the river for the frogs and the water lilies. I'm voting for Timmy Dryer. <coughs> can we go home now, please? Do you believe in climate change? I can state categorically that I do not believe in change for the sake of change. Therefore, if I am elected, I promise there will be no climate change. <laughs> 
well, I don't really see what it has to do with us here. But my view is, if youth wish to live in Asia, that's entirely up to them. What can you do about the fact that every time we even have a baby, our waistlines keep growing and we can't fit into our dresses anymore? And when are you going to pay me back for the 10 hours labour I did, fixing your front fence last month? Last week when I went to buy a little now to fix up the sole of my sandal, they sold me a great big one instead which went straight through my soul and pierced my foot. What can you do about that? If you can provide us all with big new anchors that will hold back our boats in the fiercest of Galilean storms, that's the only way to get my boat. My action contract with the Galilean people is simple. Madam, I will end the labour waste. <laughs> I will repay the labour debt. There will be no new big tax. <laughs> and I will provide big new anchors, so we will stop the boats. <laughs> Now calm down, Maggie. Take deep breaths. Did you bring your ventolin? It's OK, ladies. If you'd like to form a line with these other people here, I'd be happy to sit down and discuss any issues that are important to you. He is here. He is here. I can't <laughs> believe I'm actually in the same place as him. Settle down, ladies. I know you're probably a little overawed. But I want you to know I am still approachable. You know, sir, I don't think it will be long before your name is up in lights in every building you visit across Galilee. But you know, Jamar, the only way that will happen is if he changes his name to Exit. <laughs> I need to go meet him. Martha, does my hair look all right? Hi, Jesus. My name is Maggie. I don't believe this. This was my place, my time. You, you are a scourge on society, a viper, a leech sucking the heart out of this community. I don't believe that people actually believe the hypocrisy that you teach, or they think you can actually perform miracles. You're a blasphemer, a con man, a heretic and a liar. Do you hear me, people? This man is a troublemaker and I will do everything within my power to bring him to justice. Get out of here, Temple Man. We want to hear the teacher. Come on, Jamar, let's get out of here. OK, everyone, sorry for that little disruption. Firstly, I want to thank you all for coming along here today to the Mount Panorama. <laughs> and I know you're all keen to hear my friend Jesus speak. Can I just say how proud I am to be one of Jesus' 12 called disciples? And I know you'll all learn a lot from him today. It is indeed an honour to call him my friend. And let me say publicly that I'll always be there for you, Jesus, in good times and bad. No matter what some of those unbelievers may say about you. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you welcome the preacher, the teacher, my Lord and friend, Jesus. Thank you, Peter. The words that I have to say to you may be few, but I ask that you keep them close to your heart. Oh 
Blessing the children, please leave him alone. Peter, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Blessed are those filled with compassion, they'll receive their mercy reward. Blessed are the pure and the gentle, for they will see. children of God. Blessed are those insulted for me, as is the kingdom of God. Come to me. here today, guys. Anna, are these some of your friends? I told them all about you, Jesus. I told them how you were sad when your daddy died, and how he used to give you horsey rides, like my daddy used to give me horsey rides. Have you still got that caterpillar? I do. I named you Jesus after you. I think I'm flattered. How is he going? He's okay, as long as I keep him away from Jake. I think I'm starting to grow to like him, although a lot of people think I should just get rid of him. Keep him a bit longer. I still think he has something to teach you yet. Can you teach us, Jesus? I think the teacher needs to spend more time talking to the mums and dads now, children. Actually, I think there's a lot that us adults can learn from these children. You know, I'm sure that you all know lots of things that we haven't even thought about. You mean like when Mum's mad at Dad? Do not let her brush your hair. <laughs> oh, I had a piece of broccoli in a glass of meal. Puppies still have bad breath after you give them a Tic Tac. <laughs> Never under any circumstances Try to baptise a cat. <laughs> I heard you did a miracle in my uncle's wedding, where you turned water into wine. That's awesome. Ooh. And my aunt Leah can see it after you rub dirt into her eyes. Wow. wow! My daddy doesn't like you. Anna, your daddy loves you and your family very much. Sometimes it's hard for adults to accept things that, well, that go against what they believe to be true. But Anna, you have the faith of a child. And that faith can, well, it can move mountains. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. Actually, I'm a bit peckish myself. It's been a long time since breakfast. Well... I'm a bit surprised it's not an Apex hot dog van here. They usually always sniff out an event like this. We're all starving. Surely you could have organised some food for us. It's miles back to town. My stomach will shrivel up if it doesn't get some tucker real soon. Okay, does anyone have any food? Well, I don't have any. Jairus took the donkey. Otherwise, we could have ordered out for pizza. Josh has some. Hey, shush up, you. What have you got, Josh? 
just two fish and five small loaves of bread. That's not even enough to fill my hollow leg. I'll still be looking for a Mr. Whippy van on the way home. <laughs> Could I borrow it for a moment, child? Man, oh man, if you would have shut your trap, Jake, we would have shared half a roll with you. Now the adults get it and we'll get nothing. Um, He's right. What do we do, Jesus? The natives are getting restless and if they all go home starving, we're not going to get a good review. Peter, Peter, have faith. The faith of a child.
I'm telling you, Hezekiah, the man is dangerous. You don't have to convince me. He came into the temple last week and he turned all the market stalls in the courtyard upside down and was ranting something about, do you not know this is my father's house? Blasphemous. There were chooks and ducks and sheep and goats running in all directions. For a while, the whole place was in more of a mess than the national water policy. He's destroying the fabric of our society. He's causing people to question our interpretations of the scriptures. He touches lepers. He invites himself into the home of tax collectors. The other day, I heard he even spoke to a power supporter. <laughs> Blasphemous! Jairus, can we go home now, please? I don't think Anna is well. Sure, honey, we'll go in a few moments. It is because of him that people are beginning to doubt our authority. It is because of him that less money is going into the temple and being given to, can you believe it, poor people. And I bet he had something to do with us losing the ashes. <laughs> and the World Cup. Jairus, can we please go home now? Do you mind if we stop at the 24-hour pharmacy to pick up some Panadol? Oh, she's burning up. I said, we'll go in a moment. And what about all these locusts? Oh, Betty had something to do with them as well. Poor old donkey has to cruise down the street with them stuck up his nose. We've had to put a screen over his teeth. And he's got yellow stains all over his neck. It's time we made a move, Hezekiah. Call the authorities together and find something we can hold against him. The floods. WikiLeaks. <laughs> the silo cues at Viterra. Anything. I'll be there with you. We've got to get rid of him. Mummy, I don't feel well. I need to go, Hezekiah. Keep me informed. We will do this together. Absolutely. Okay, honey, we'll go home now. Daddy will carry you to the donkey and we'll get some medicine so you'll feel better. I love you, honey. What's the matter with her, Mummy? You keep saying that she's going to get better. But she seems to be getting weaker and weaker. Just keep praying for her, honey. Hopefully she'll turn the corner soon. But she's been like this for six weeks and nothing has seemed to make a difference. I know you and Dad have got in all the best doctors and specialists money can buy. Surely they've figured out what's wrong with her by now. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be anything they've ever come across before. It seems that something is poisoning her system and they can't find a cure for it. But there's got to be something else we can try. Daddy's a very important person. Surely he can find someone who can work out what's wrong with her. You know your father hasn't been at work since Anna first got sick. 
He has tried and paid for everything from doctors to naturopaths to herbal remedies, and nothing seems to have worked. There was even that strange doctor who brought a kitten and a Labrador puppy into her room. The kitten walked up and down all over her body while the dog just sniffed her and walked out. What was that about? That was just some newfangled technology your father came across. I think they call it a CAT scan. (laughs) And the other was a lab test. (laughs) She is going to get better. Isn't she, Mum? What about the preacher Jesus? They say he heals people. Why doesn't Daddy go and speak to him? You know your father has some difficulties with Jesus and he has forbidden anyone to talk with him. But this is my little sister. She could die if no one finds out what's wrong with her. We just have to be strong and pray that she'll turn the corner soon. She's not getting any better, is she? No, she's not. But this can't happen to us. Not to our little girl. I've done everything I can, Miriam. We've got in the best doctors, the highest calibre specialists. We've given her the most expensive tonics. Nothing seems to be doing any good. I know you have, honey. I don't know what else I can do. What's the point of power and wealth and privilege if I can't use it to save my little girl? I'd do anything, anything at all to bring her back to health. I'm scared, Miriam. I don't want to lose her. Would you go and see Jesus? That man. Don't make the situation worse than it already is. You know what I think of him and the damage that he's doing to this community? But they say he heals people. I've got him the best this country can offer. And no one, I mean no one, has been able to do anything. But this is our daughter. Swallow your pride. You've heard the stories, I know you have. And I know that some of the people you work with hate him. But this is our daughter. Would you do it for me? Would you do it for Anna? But what would I say to him? There are crowds of people following him everywhere he goes. They've all heard the things I've said about him. Just go quickly and bring him here to us. I will go to Jesus. She can't die, Miriam. Our daughter can't die. No, Jamar, this is something I'd need to do alone. our faith? Peter, I'll tell you, if you had faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this tree here, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Can't see you doing that, Peter. (laughs) You have a nerve being here. It's okay, Peter. What is it? It's my daughter. 
She's unwell. In fact, she's more than unwell. I think she's dying. I've tried all doctors and, and specialists, and nothing seems to be doing anything. And... And so now you come here crawling to Jesus after all you've been doing to destroy him. Peter, let it be. Are you talking about your daughter, Anna? You know her name. We have met. Are you saying that Anna is unwell? Jesus. I'm sorry, Jesus. I shouldn't have bothered you. But, but they say you're a healer. I know I've been causing people to, to rally against you. And I don't even deserve to have you listen to me. But she's just lying there so sick and so still. And she seems to be getting worse by the hour. So if you could please just come and do something to help my precious... I will come. What? How can you? After all the trouble he's been causing you! Peter. Um, I have caused trouble. And I'm sorry. But they say you can do things no one else can. You can make the blind see. And the deaf hear. And the lame walk. I just want my daughter back. So if you could please, Jesus, come and do something, anything to, to save my little girl, to take away her fever, to give her back her strength, to allow us to once more see her beautiful smile. And... No. 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 No! Tell me, Jamar. Tell me she's still alive. Come, Jairus. I need to go to your house today. But why? Why? My daughter is dead. Just let me come.
Jairus, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. But, but I don't get it. How did he do it? Where does his power come from? I really don't care. All I know is that our daughter is alive. And he did it. Who is this man? He's gone all day. 
I'm deeply troubled. Stay awake and pray for me. Pray for me, Peter. Father, this is too much for me to bear. Yet not my will, but your will be done. Give me your strength, Lord. Wake, my time has come. Wake up, James. Wake, Peter, my time has come. Jesus. They won't find him guilty of anything, Hezekiah. Oh, ye of little faith. Of course they will. They'll get him for troublemaking, for plotting against the government, for blaspheming. They'll never make it stick. Of course it will stick. We'll make it stick. We can make anything stick. But he's done nothing wrong. Then we'll make people think he's done something wrong to get him out of our hair. I mean, that stunt where he fed all the people for free could put all the traders offside and cause another Galilean financial crisis. That would be a start. We could say that his rumours of him doing healings is not helping our policy of bringing in more overseas doctors. We could say that his promotion of the eating of lentils could cause another bout of global warming. Hey, that guy over there, wasn't he with Jesus when we arrested him? I really couldn't care. Hey, huh. you! Weren't you one of those people who was with Jesus? No, no, you must be mistaken. It wasn't me. Arresting Jesus like this, Hezekiah, doesn't make any sense. The Lions drafting for Vola didn't make any sense. 67% water allocations when the river's in flood doesn't make any sense. Hey, hey, it's Saturday on Wednesday didn't make any sense. <laughs> but you and I both know that getting rid of that guy just had to happen for all of us. We shouldn't have done it, Hezekiah. We've betrayed an innocent man. I don't know what's gotten into you, Jairus. You spent weeks getting to know that Judas character so that he would lead us to him in the garden last night. 
And now you seem to be wimping out. Toughen up, princess. <laughs> I'm telling you, those 30 pieces of silver were one of the best investments we ever made. Watching him betray his teacher and kiss him on the cheek at Gethsemane? That was priceless. You! It is you who are responsible for this! Just let it be, Maggie. I won't leave it be! You all heard him. Scorning the teacher. Publicly denouncing his miracles. Calling him a heretic and a liar. This is your doing! Get out of here, you crazy woman. Jairus is a hero for saving Galilee from that troublemaker. He isn't a troublemaker. He preached love, peace, kindness and justice. He was turning people against each other. You don't even know who he is, do you? You need to get out and spend some time with the people whose lives he transformed, who spent every day at his feet listening to him teach. Like, like that guy by the fire. He was one of his disciples. Talk to him. You must be thinking of someone else. It wasn't me. I'm just trying to warm up by the fire this freezing night. Let me tell you, sir. If any harm comes to my Jesus, his blood will well and truly be on your hands. Let's go, Maggie. <laughs> She's right, Hezekiah. She's absolutely right. Don't be ridiculous, Jairus. It had to happen. No more lies about miracles or someone telling people that they should associate with lepers and tax collectors. Back when we are in control of the scriptures and the rules of the temple. Back to the days when the biggest controversy in town was whether the Donkeys would be distracted by the new shrubs in the roundabout renovation. He brought my daughter back to life, Hezekiah. I know you love your daughter, Jairus. And sometimes it makes us feel better to believe in some sort of miraculous healing when it may just have been a delayed reaction to my Delilah's hot chilli euros that I brought around last week. The man is dangerous, Jairus. You said so yourself. Jamar, what have you learnt? They took him to Pontius Pilate, who grilled him for hours and found nothing wrong with him. So I had him beaten and sent through to King Herod. Here he comes again now. Herod must have sent him back to Pilate. Surely he'll just have him flogged and let him go. No, Jairus, there is only one answer. They need to crucify him. You know it in your heart. They need to crucify him. Pilate is a clever man. He will have worked out that he's done nothing wrong. Surely he can find some way to wash his hands of him. And there must be others here who believe he's innocent. You! You were there on the mount. Hey, you were there when he raised my Anna. You were there in the garden. I know you were. I'll tell you, it wasn't me. I don't know the man. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? What have, what have I... What have I done? <laughs> You've been planning and plotting this day for months. This can be your victory. We can't let it slip now. What do you think Pilate should do with him? Should he let him back onto the streets to cause more unrest? Or should he deal with him now? Crucify him. What was that? Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify He's an innocent man. He needs to be stopped.
All I ever wanted in life was for my family to have the best, to provide you with good food, nice clothes, a beautiful house. I took pride in the fact that we knew the scriptures. We observed the law. We give money to the poor. I'm a life member of the Lions Club. I won a Galilee Great Award for my services to the community. Political greatness and a lifetime of free travel was just around the corner. And along came this humble servant of God who challenged everything I ever stood for. And I had him killed. You can't blame yourself, Jairus. I heard his teachings. I felt his miraculous touch. I was challenged by his words. I saw the love he had for all mankind, his affection for children, his tolerance of those who persecuted him. All values I thought were mine. They say he was of God. He didn't fit in with my life, my plans, my aspirations. I had delusions of grandeur. I was so caught up in my own self-importance. I was so consumed with creating my own God. Maybe I missed seeing God when he was right there in front of me. Do you think he was God? There were those who heard his teachings, who looked to him with hope. There were those who cried out in pain, who felt his healing touch. There were those who were challenged by his words, who became new people. I saw my daughter raised to life in front of my eyes, and I let him be killed. You shouldn't be here, Anna. He was my friend, Daddy. Mommy said I could come and put some flowers by his grave. You may place the flowers, then you must leave. This is no place for a little girl. Do you think he was God, Daddy? Some things are very difficult to understand and explain to children, Anna. Maybe we'll talk about it when you're older. Jesus told us in the mountain that adults should be more like us kids. He said faith can move mountains, whatever that means. I think it's too late for faith now. I'm glad it wasn't too late for faith when you went and got Jesus when I was really sick. So am I. So, who do you think he was? When I met him when his daddy died, we talked about the caterpillar that Jake tried to scare me with. I called the caterpillar Jesus because some people didn't like him and others thought he should be got rid of, although he had done no wrong. Jesus told me I should keep the caterpillar because it would one day give me a surprise. And what was the surprise? There wasn't one. And now it seems to have a hard shell around its body and it looks as if it has died, just like my friend Jesus has. Would it be all right if I came back on Sunday and buried the caterpillar by his tomb? It seems like the right thing to do. You're an amazing girl, Anna. I think God sent him to come live with us. He gave me a new life, Daddy. He could give 
anyone in your life. He's died, Anna. You can't help anyone anymore. God can do anything, Daddy. Maybe you're right, Anna. Maybe you're right.
Tavia Creek. Are you coming, Anna? It's going to be so cool. I don't know what it's got to do with yabbing, but Daddy told me he's going to buy me an opera house. <laughs> it's a type of yabby net, Beck. This is my sister who sits right at the back of the school bus camel because she thinks she's going to get a longer ride. <laughs> I'm sorry your friend Jesus died, Anna. Did you find a good spot to bury his cat the caterpillar next to his grave? He's not dead anymore, Beck. He has become something new. What do you mean? He is alive again and he is here with me now. He was the surprise, and Jesus said we could all be like him. Isn't that a great hope? I don't understand what you're talking about, Anna. I don't understand either, but I believe it.